Hi guys, this is a bike starter motor. Now the starter motors are designed to operate at 12 to 24 volts although the current rating is very high. Like uh, the minimum rated starter motor is at 160 watts which means that it will draw a minimum amount of current that is going to be 13.33 amps at free running state not at loaded state. You can imagine the quantity of current flow with the thickness of the wires like this is a complete bolt and this wire is so very thick. Now here what I have is a 15 volts 3 ampere power supply from a laptop charger. So is it going to be enough to start this motor? Let's find out. So these are the two terminals. You can see guys that there is sparking but the shaft is not even moving from its position. No movement. That is because the current being fed to this motor is not enough to even start it a little bit. So high current is required. Now to run high current motors like these we need a high current power supply. This is a 40 amps center tap transformer. This black wire is the tapping point while these two red wires are the side wires. So this set is going to be the primary and this is going to be the secondary. This black wire which is thicker and this is going to carry the high current and produce low voltage output for running high current DC motors such as these. Now you might also be familiar with these two circuits that I used in my previous inverter video like this was uh, the oscillation circuit and this was the switching circuit so I did a few modifications and uh, I'm not going to use this oscillation circuit and this circuit is going to operate without this okay so let's remove this one now all I'm left with are six transistors two one three double zero nine and one CDC one three five one and same for this set okay now I'm going to connect this transformer to this circuit. Okay, so let's do that. This is uh, the collector terminal, common collector of this set. So it will be connected over here. The collector terminal of this set has been connected to this wire. Now the second collector terminal from this set will be connected to this wire okay now that is done too all I'm left with is the center tap wire this one and the common emitter for this switching circuit now the changes that I did to replace on the oscillation circuit I will show you what I did was I just use these two 1 kilo ohm 5 watt resistors and they have to be 5 watts because they are going to heat a lot so it will be each of these will be connected to the base and collector of the 1351 transistor set so this is your clip that will be connected to the base of one of the CTC 1351 transistors and connect one of the resistor terminal to the base okay one is connected now the second part now the collector of the other set will be connected to this terminal okay so one resistor has been successfully connected now to the left out two wires this resistor will be connected okay which is uh, the first one is your collector terminal the middle one is the collector terminal of CTC 1351 to that terminal this resistor will be connected and to the base of this CTC 1351 the other terminal will be connected okay so now this circuit is going to be both switching circuit as well as the oscillation circuit now to power up this circuit i will use two printer adapters okay so this is from a printer 
you can see here it is a 32 volts DC supply at 940 milliamps so it is close to 1 ampere and I have another one at a little bit lower rating yeah this one this is from an HP printer okay 32 volts at 625 milliamps so together it is going to make around 1.5 amps and 32 volts in parallel so this is what I am going to use to feed this circuit okay so these are the two wires coming out from the printer adapters you can see that it is showing 31.5 volts 31.6 which is almost 32 volts so uh, this black tape indicates uh, the negative terminal which will be connected to the common emitter of this switching and oscillation circuit now all I'm left with is this center tap point of this transformer and the positive terminal from the printer adapters okay so this sound indicates that the system is performing good as expected now even though everything seems fine still this setup is producing alternating current AC so I have to convert it into DC by connecting a rectifier okay so guys uh, this is a 32 amperes bridge rectifier yeah kbpc 3510 vanco so i will connect this to the transformer the positive uh, the ac you can see here uh, the ac sign yeah that will be connected this one is ac this one is ac that will be connected to these two wires okay okay so the first thing is connecting the terminal the second thing is connecting this wire now the voltage is very low so it is not dangerous except for the current that can burn you because the current is going to be very high of course okay yeah so as you can see guys that it is running now such a high ampere self start motor is running with the printer chargers because I have stepped up the current value from 1 ampere to whatever it is requiring at present for starting up let's check if it is really hot or not yeah it is really really hot the transformer is very hot the bridge rectifier is also burning up that is because uh, it, uh, it has the maximum current dissipation capability of 32 amperes and it was uh, really loaded at this time let's see the windings yeah the secondary is also burning because it is carrying large amount of current and since I'm using really thin secondary which is not designed to carry such high amperes it could burn after continuous usage yeah it is very hot so let's do this one more time okay so connecting this terminal yeah and now this one Yeah. Hey guys, I have another large PMDC motor. You can see here. Yeah, it is a really big and it is 1.5 horsepower, 4000 rpm clockwise permanent magnet, okay? so i'm going to test if this motor is going to run with this circuit that i have just made okay so let's test this one as well okay so guys i have connected this dc motor here to the rectifier of this setup so let's test if uh, this system is capable of driving this heavy duty 1.5 hp pmdc motor okay so let's go 
you can see that it is running very slowly but this circuit is obviously capable enough to start up this motor yeah you can see that uh, the speed is not very high but still this circuit being capable enough to drive up this motor is a success in itself okay so guys i hope you like this video thank you so much for watching it please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe thank you